Here we are, the final act of Diablo 4. In the previous act, we finally had our first few victories in our fight against Lilith as we defeated Elias and repaired the Soul Stone. So let's see what we have in store. Let's get into the breakdown. We arrive in Tarsark and speak with Nairel. She mentions that Lorath and Donan have gone with the Knights to Caldeum as they felt that it would be best for them to follow them as they march onto the gate. She asks us if she could ask us a personal question, to which we say yes, asking if we've ever felt like nothing that we do matters. We say more than we would like to admit. People call us a hero, but underneath, we're still the same person we always were. Powerful, but flawed. Even though we try, we are unable to help Yonin, or Nairal's mother, for example. She thanks us for being honest and said that we should meet up with the others in Caldeum. Once we arrive, we can see that something very strange is happening in the city. Blood is falling from the sky. We mention that no mortal is capable of this kind of magic. We speak to Donan about the blood falling from the sky and he mentions the paragraph from Rothma's prophecy. Tears of blood rained on a desert jewel. We are witnessing cosmic history being made. It turns out that the knights are in the midst of sacking the city, and since the rain and hell spawn all spew from the gates of hell, it means that Lilith has already opened the way to hell. Lorith reiterates that if she consumes Mephisto's essence, Sanctuary is lost. As we get further into the city, we can see many of Lilith's cultists that have been slain and their bodies left out in the open for everyone to see. Nairal mentions that there's nothing of the light in this, Donan correcting her by saying that the display is the point. They mean to make an example of them. Light begins to shine down above us as it passes overhead. It's Anarius, as he is now entering the city to take part in the siege. Lorath thinks that Anarius is still our best shot of an ally that we have. We find some cultists as they begin chanting about the blood falling from the sky, mentioning that this is what the Lord of Hatred said. This worries Lorath and Donan, as the cultists once belonged to Elias and Elias belonged to Lilith, but for some reason they're now mentioning the name of Mephisto. We reach the Night Penitent members before Anarius is giving them a speech, telling them that the time of the prophecy has come that Lilith flees through the gate to hell, boasting that he will slay her in the cesspit that she calls a home, opening the way to the heavens. He restates a paragraph from Rathma's prophecy, a spear of light piercing hatred's heart. And for those that die in battle today, you may die heavenbound. Lorath asks him what his plan is after that. Anarius responds that the Herodrum is up to the same act as always, chasing after the battles of their betters, saying that the angels don't need them. Lorath requests the stone from Donan before telling Anarius that we don't need the angels either. Anarius pulls the stone from Donan's fingers, claiming it for himself, calling it hubris, that the Herodrum boasts of a mere fragment of what it once was, the world stone debased in the hands of fools, saying that Lilith dies only by his blade as the prophecy foretold. He leaves with the soul stone as we ask Lorath what we should do now. He mentions that nothing has changed and we should just continue on with our plan. Donan questions how Lorath could say that this changes nothing. Our one potential ally just ran off with our one weapon. Lorath says that he needs to stop Lilith and forget Anarius, as his pride makes him an unreliable ally. They suggest that we still have a valuable weapon, despite not having the Soul Stone. That weapon being us. We find Reverend Mother Prava outside. She welcomes Donan, welcoming him back and saying that the Father will deliver us all. Donan is frustrated, saying that Anarius seized our soul stone. The Reverend Mother believes that his will is light and therefore always correct, mentioning how surprised she is that Donan still doubts them, despite everything that they have done for him and Yorin. But at least Yorin doesn't have to see him like this. Donan attempts to attack her, but is stopped by Lorath. The Reverend Mother states that sin reaps consequences, and she knows that the father acted righteously. Lorath requests that we join them on their march to the gate, as it would be safer for the both of us. She gives a final speech to her knights about Anarius killing Lilith and Hal, and we begin our march. Donan pulls us aside during the walk and reminds us that we can't trust the Reverend Mother. Lorath agrees, but mentions that they have an army, and that we share a common goal. Along the way, we come head to head with Duriel, the Lord of Pain. He is one of the four lesser evils in the twin to Andariel. We manage to defeat him, but tensions are running high within the group. Lorath is frustrated that Donan didn't keep his call with Prava, while Donan says that Lorath shouldn't have thrown away the stone as he did. Lorath goes over the plan one final time, stating that we need to reach Mephisto's domain, since across the Sea of Fire resides Astaroth's domain. And he wages that's why Lilith freed him, so that he could grant her across the Sea of Fire to her father's domain. They end up arguing again, before Nairel tells them to stop, saying that instead of arguing, 
let's do something about it and retrieve the stone back from Anarius. However, proposing another option, saying that using the soul stone on Lilith is the wrong choice. Instead, the soul stone should be used on Mephisto, stating that his powers of manipulation and hatred are already poisoning us. And since Lilith even fears him, why don't they? Lorith shuts it down and we continue towards the gate to hell. Once we arrive, we can see some blood petals on the floor, revealing a vision. Lilith stands before the gate of hell as she mentions that she can feel her father's fear, clutching the key and causing the door to open. We enter hell and I must say I can see why I got a 1 star rating on Yelp. Nayral mentions that everything is wrong here, while Donan says that mortals were never actually even meant to tread in this place. We find the remnants of a big battle from the forces of Prava as they cleared the path ahead. Lorath states that they were simply fodder for a broken angel's ambitions. We come across the Reverend Mother Prava as she lies injured upon the ground. When we move her body, we can also find the soul stone beneath her. Turns out she's actually alive, and she mentions that Anarius has followed Lilith into the spire, stating that salvation is coming. Lorath interrupts, telling her that no salvation is coming for these knights or her, since she is simply a tool for somebody that doesn't care about any of us, not to mention a thief, saying that she had the stone this entire time since we have been with her. She mentions that Anarius entrusted her with it before realizing that it's missing from her person. She calls us insolent heretics and servants of darkness, telling us that we will all be damned. Lorith mentions that she has been poisoned with hatred and that we should leave her, but Donan mentions that she isn't the only one and to remember why we are here and who we're fighting against before giving Prava a tonic that should help her get to her feet, telling her to run for the portal and not to look back if she knows what's good for her. We regather as we now know that the cathedral was in shambles. We are on our own. We battle through the countless demons as Lorath compliments Donan, saying that he is good at leading people. Donan jokes that he should write this moment down since Lorath never compliments him. We begin to see the effects of the hatred domain wearing off. A giant goddamn demon dog appears. We need to fend it off, showing that the closer that we get to the cathedral and by proxy Lilith, the more powerful the demons are becoming. We see more blood petals on the ground, showing us what happened in the big battle. Mother Prava is walking barefoot in lava like an absolute badass as she looks towards the horizon within hell. A light slowly engulfs the army as Anarius joins the fight hovering overhead. He casts a light across the demons and they now charge the knight's penitent. The soldiers set up in formation, ready for battle against Hell's forces. Anaria spots Lilith in the distance and goes after her, throwing his spear at her in an attempt to fulfill the prophecy. Another demon gets in the way to protect her, leaving Anarius to fend off the surrounding demons. Lilith enters the spire and Anarius follows after her and Lilith asks him if he remembers the whispers of the damned, referring to the millennia that he spent as Mephisto's prisoner. He tells her that words won't save her, while Lilith mocks him, saying that the soldier returns with such purpose, no longer the conflicted soul that she left behind. She asks him what he truly wants, to which he replies his rightful place in the heavens. She asks if that is why he seeks to destroy all that they have created, from sanctuary to even their son. He says that he did it to satisfy the heavens. Lilith points out that the heavens didn't rejoice when he killed his own son, since they don't even want him. Anarius stabs Lilith in the chest as the battle continues to rage outside. Lilith reminds Anarius that they made a choice and that the heavens will never forgive him, no matter what he tells himself or who he sacrifices. Silence is his judgment. This causes Anarius to go into an emotional breakdown as he pleads to the heavens to tell him what he must do. Lilith takes this time to stab Anarius in the back as he screams out for help from the heavens. She tells him that he belongs in hell as she rips off his wings. We can see the light of Anarius dwindle as the forces of the Knights Penitent crumble to the forces of hell outside. We close on Anarius' corpse melting into the floor as the dam surround him for eternity. We notify the others about what happened. Lorith points out that Lilith should be easier to trap since she's now weakened, almost like she's a Pokemon or something. We begin to realize that we've actually lost Lilith and... Lorath believes that we could use the sightless eye to look for her. Donan hears a sound behind him and checks the pillar to investigate. One of the damned grabs him out of nowhere and claws open his stomach, severely wounding him. We manage to kill all of the undead around and check on Donan. 
He says that he is fine and mentions that the sightless eye is the only way that we have to find Lilith and that we need to hurry with that. We use the sightless eye and can see Lilith's current location. She is standing next to the Sea of Fire as Astaroth approaches her. He mentions that she is here, wanting to collect her safe passage to the Cathedral of Hatred, pointing out the injury that Lilith now has from Minarius. He tells her that he will honour his promise and will help her face her father. As the vision ends, Lilith turns towards us, telling us that we were foolish to even use the sightless eye on her again. She traps us, becoming a prisoner in our own mind, stating that she could keep us here forever, but will offer us a different fate, telling us that we could be Sanctuary's greatest protector if we choose to, wishing to show us why the world has need of us. She says that ever since we drank her blood, she has been a part of us, carrying our hopes and fears in her heart, gifting humans with free will, but they are so lost without a shepherd to guide them. We can see the priest from the church in the Vesk as a memory, saying that humans flock to these places for answers and to submit to the spectacle, saying that we also, much like her, see through that illusion. We can find a memory of Donan as he mourns Joran's death, as well as Vigo after he served his penance. Memories of people that we lost along the way, people that we couldn't save. Lilith points out that her son was wiser than the Herodrum, but he couldn't be a shepherd either. Anarius, Elias, Lorath wanted so badly to see their own meaning in the prophecy. They were blind to the simple truth of it, that we are all prisoners of the eternal conflict, the pawns of angels and demons. Saying that it was incredibly human of Anarius to think that the prophecy was about him, suggesting that possibly humans inherited that vanity from him. We can find Elias down here too, as Lilith mentions that he believed that she would be the one to lead humans of sanctuary when in reality only a human can lead other humans, asking us to take on the role of shepherd for her, saying the real enemy is hatred, destruction and terror, the three prime evils. She feels that we can turn the tide in the eternal conflict in our favour, and it starts with Mephisto's destruction, wanting us to lead the battles to come. We can see the three statues of Diablo, Mephisto and Baal as we deny her offer. She tells us that we will be shackled here forever as waves of demons attack us. In the midst of the battle, a portal opens up as Mephisto offers us a helping hand. On the other side, we find ourselves back inside of the cave from the beginning of the story. As Mephisto tells us not to cower, he has come to free us from Lilith's trap. We ask him why he continues to help us and he mentions that he saved us from the cave because he sensed that we could end Lilith and that is all he wants. But he does admit that there will come a time when we will be enemies, but right now we need each other in order to defeat Lilith. He tells us to look at him in the eye as he brands us with his blessing, allowing us to traverse to his cathedral without fear or risk. Lilith asks why would we follow Mephisto instead of her, asking if we are truly that foolish. We mention that we don't serve either of them, but Lilith wants to know what Mephisto offered us, getting angrier and angrier when we don't answer her. We manage to wake from the nightmare and we can hear Nayrell crying. We look over at Donan and can see that he is in a very bad state. He tells Lorath to not even dare thinking of burying him in hell, to which Lorath jokes that he's too old to even haul his body out of hell. Lorath tells Donan that he should have come to him instead of the cathedral that he would have shown up for him and shared in his burden. Donor replies that he knows, and perhaps things would have gone differently with Skosglen and even Yonan if he did. He asks if it was enough, if Yonan would think it was enough before dying. Lorath tells his friend, yes, that he has done more than enough. We update Lorath and he tells us to continue on without him, to trust our gut. We decide to continue onwards with Nairal as Mephisto appears again. We tell her that this is the wolf that helped us escape Lilith, before she realises that the wolf is the form taken by Mephisto. She asks us how we could trust a prime evil, to which Mephisto replies that trust had nothing to do with it, instead we came to reason, which he advises Nyrell to do the same, since if Lilith takes his essence, Sanctuary will be lost forever. He tells us to enter the portal as it will lead us straight to the Cathedral of Hatred, and that Lilith is almost there. We mention to Nayrell that we will set an ambush and will distract her while Nayrell traps her in the stone. Mephisto loves the idea, saying that we can leave the stone with him and he will ensure that Lilith never troubles our world again. We return home and he will remain in hell. Nayrell mentions that something isn't right and Mephisto leading us to this moment we are in his realm, doubting if we should even be doing what he wants, noting that between him and Lilith 
he is actually the greater evil of the two. We ask if she wishes to use the stone on him, and I'm not sure if we just forgot that we're in his damn house or something, but Mephisto hears this entire conversation, telling us to think very carefully that the path suggested would lead to failure for all of us. Narelle points out that Mephisto is afraid, but we admit that it could work. We imprison Mephisto in the stone, and then we could head back to Lorath. Then we can seal the gates of hell behind us, leaving Lilith here. Mephisto doesn't like the idea, considering if Lilith catches us before we leave hell, he is essentially a sitting duck for her, and she will claim his power, asking that we don't let our hate towards him blind us from the common sense. We tell Narelle that we cannot trust our own thoughts about Mephisto, telling her to make the decision that she feels is the right one. Mephisto looks at her and reminds her that the lives and those of all humanity depend on what she does next. No pressure. She plunges the soul stone into Mephisto and thus trapping him within. He opens up a portal for them to exit while still in wolf form. And I'm not entirely sure how he can still do that while being in the soul stone, but sure. We plan to stay behind and face Lilith, while she will go and meet back up with Lorath, saying that they will wait for us at the chapel. Lilith now approaches and mentions one of the scariest lines you could possibly ever hear from an antagonist. You will learn pain only glimpsed in myth. That's as badass of a line as you will get. We fight Lilith and manage to get the best of her before she turns into what I believe is her true form, since it looks so much like Mephisto's true form. But we beat her all the same. Blood petals fall from the sky as Lilith mentions that Sanctuary was built as a refuge from the conflict, but here we are again. She gave us free will and we squandered it, wasting it on a crusade that we don't even understand, saying that we chose tyranny when offered freedom, calling it a poor legacy for her gift. Without her, we would have no victory and its cost will be more than we can pay as we see glimpses of Mephisto. She straight up gets thanos as she begins to turn to dust and crumbles. We look on to see the blood petals in the air beginning to crumble as well. We return to Lorath and tell him that Lilith is dead and Mephisto is trapped within the soul stone, before realizing that Nayrell never returned to him, surmising that she might have gone straight to the desert chapel. We decided to help carry Donan's body out of hell and head to the chapel together, before getting some more narration from Lorath. He mentions that we are now truly alone, that the creators of Sanctuary, Angel and Demon, Father and Mother, are dead. That we were made from their image, that their conflict is a part of us and always will be. He wonders if there is any truth to Lilith's vision, an escape from the eternal conflict, before conceding that these questions don't befit an old man, as he doesn't have much time left, the struggle is no longer his anymore. He wonders if we will walk the same path as all the children who rebelled against their parents, in the process becoming them, but he hopes that the Wanderer and Nairel avoid the fate of Rothma and everyone else who tried and failed to overcome our flawed nature. And that concludes the story of Act 6 of Diablo 4. However, don't go anywhere just yet as there is an epilogue that we will jump straight into now. It's not very long, so let's get into it. We arrive back at the Desert Chapel and find no sign of Nairel anywhere. We wonder if Mephisto could have corrupted Nairel, but Lorath believes that it would have taken much more time for it to seep from the stone. She left for her own reason. We mention that she could have returned to the vault, but the group of night penitent soldiers arrive behind us. The one leading is Yosef, the mad priest that saved our life in Nevesk. He tells us that he is here for the Herodrum before attacking. We regretfully kill them all and can find a note from Prava, ordering them to find the Herodrum since they have been using dark magics to bear a great evil into our world. We are shocked by what we just did, telling Lorath that Yosef saved our life once and they are not our enemies. Lorath shrugs it off, telling us that he intends to go and bury Donan with his son, while we go to the vault and check for Nairel. As we approach the vault, we can hear multiple flashbacks of Nairel from the past, before finding a note in the vault. It is written in Herodric code and cannot be deciphered by us. We return to Lorath, as he is now finished burying Donan with his son Yorin. We give him the letter to read, and while I could narrate this, it feels appropriate to play the scene out in its entirety so you can see it as it's presented. I spent a lot of time learning this code, so I hope you remember how to read it, Morath, because you are the last Horadrim now. My mother would have wanted me to stay with you. She believed the Horadrim had all the answers. 
I don't know if she'd recognize this person I'm becoming. It's hard for me to think about her right now. But then I remember you and Donan. You weren't all-knowing, Haradrim. You were bitter. You were uncertain. But... You were always true friends. That's what I hold on to. Because there is so much further to go. Your imperfection gave me hope. And we will need it to face what comes next. To face him and his brothers. I don't know how much time I have, but there has to be a better answer, and I have to find it. Alone. I know you want to go with me, but people have already died because I was not careful enough. I can't risk you too. I've misjudged. The world is going to need you to survive and clean up the mistakes I leave behind. I know you don't want to hear this, but you don't get to quit. Not again. Wish me well, Morath. Because if everything works out as I am hoping, we will never see each other again. And that concludes the story of Diablo 4 in its entirety. Well, at least until the DLCs come out anyway. I really hope that you have enjoyed the series as it was released and it's been very fun making it. If you made it to the end of the video, please write Donan in the comments down below to show that you did. Remember to like and subscribe for more content in the future and maybe check out some of our older stuff to see if it's for you. Until next time, peace.